So today uh, they cut. You ready for this? Mm-hmm. Frankie Monet, Ember Moon, Jesse Kamea, Katrina Cortez, Jeet Rama, Oni Lorkin, Trey Baxter, Zeta Ramir, Scarlet, B Fab, Grand Metallic, Lindsay Dorado, Karrion Cross, Harry Smith, Nia Jax, Eva Marie, Keith Lee, and Mia Yim. The message that went out to all of the talent was that they had been released, quote, and this is a direct quote, due to budget cuts. On the same day that they had an earnings call, it announced that they had revenues of $256 million for the quarter. Okay? Now, for those of you that remember the Monday Night Wars and when WWE was just, like, doing gangbusters with fans and they bought World Championship Wrestling, we're talking 2001 right here, uh, their revenues for that year were $456 million. Their revenues for this quarter were $256 million. And the day this is announced, they tell the talent that all of these individuals have been released due to budget cuts. And let's be honest here, everybody. I've been saying this forever. How do you have a a low talent budget when you're making $256 million? Well, it's because they've lowered this talent budget because I believe with every ounce of my being, that they may not be in the middle of sale negotiations right now, but this dude is putting all his ducks in a row to get this place ready in case somebody comes along with a little bit of money, which, you know, it's 2021, and a lot of people got a lot of money. But they've all been released. BFAB literally signed a new contract last week and then was cut a week later. So she signed her main roster contract a week ago? Yeah, and then was cut. Wow. And uh, you remember uh, old Top Dalla when they did that one interview after they got uh, called up? And a lot of people were thinking, my God, what happened here? And he did that big thing about how we're all the same. Nothing's going to change. Well, they cut old B-Fab, so something's changed already. Well, everybody's thinking about that right now. But that's the news, Lance. What can you do? They've cut a lot of people. You can't feel bad anymore. Well, you can feel bad for the individuals. Well, for them, I was talking about you personally feeling bad to be cut. Well, no, I was... You're in the majority now. I was cut, what, 140 people ago. Yes. But that's the thing that, like, everyone has to or at least should realize that they had over-signed to an insane amount. The fact that they've been able to cut, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of 125 talent in the last two years... And the show has still got lots of talent and bodies and for the most part the same. And and it just reminded me that like when I went back, you know, I signed on as a producer and I got there and my first instinct was there's like 16 of us. Why do they have so many producers? And my first thought was it's like I better get good at this job and be liked by talent because... Even then, which was, you know, pre-pandemic, I'm like, they could cut a half a dozen of us and it wouldn't change anything here. And, you know, there was TVs where there'd be two producers assigned to one segment. There'd be many TVs where a producer would just do a match on main event. And I'm like, there's a lot of bodies here. And it's like, I knew immediately that there was a chance that any of us were expendable. And then you know, four months later, me and nine others got sacked, although that was more pandemic related. But I think, you know, with when AEW started, they just started signing tons and tons and tons of people. And now they've decided that they don't need to hoard talent anymore. And on a whim, they'll just cut people now. And they've cut a lot of people. You know, the other thing that I want to mention here, which I guess is sort of news, is that the... They used to, you know, they've gotten in and out with these uh, hiring requirements. And we always hear about the men. They want you to be 6'2", they want you to be 225 pounds, and they don't want you to be over, like, 27 years old, 30 years old. I think 27 was the most recent number. That was, like, their their requirements for males. And you never heard about the women. But uh, it appears that the new, the new deal that they've got for developmental is they want young women. And I've heard two ages. I'm not sure which one is is accurate, but uh, it's either 23 or 25. They don't want anyone over 23 or 25 if you're a female in developmental. 
Well, and... the thing is, like, with what appears to be the new direction with developmental of hire people with zero background and train them from scratch, like, if you're looking at several years in developmental, and then if you want to maximize a good decade out of them on the main roster, you got to get them young. You know, I, I well, don't sure, think... but I, I don't know how. I mean, I don't know. Some of these you know, people are in, in developmental for like a decade, it seems. Seven well, there, years for some of them. Yeah, there's been some that are six or seven. And if if you go with the thought process that those were people, like some of them were like good workers that got over at other places when they got signed and still spent three or four years in developmental. So if you're want to allot five years in developmental, if you want to get them to the main roster before they're in their 30s or by the time they're in their early 30s you gotta sign them young and it's it's funny because not funny but it strange like when i got basically moved out now granted i was the one that went to them and said okay hey you know what can i do not on the roster but it had gotten to the point where it was very clear that rather than trying to come up with new ideas for me they would rather just have new faces because then the show could be new without having to come up with new ideas for someone who'd been there for a while. So it's like I was already feeling like I was getting edged out because they were looking for newer and younger. And I was 35. And that's when I got off the main roster and went, look, I'll just be a trainer because they don't seem to have interest in coming up with new ideas for me. So it's like... They were looking at the Mark Jindrax and the Lance Cades and the, you know, the 25 year olds when I was 35. And the other thing I wanted to mention, too, when we mentioned people have been in developmental for like seven years. So I don't know exactly what the what this entails, but uh, in general, the new idea is that they are going to be heavily evaluating everybody every six months from this point forward. I think the idea is we no longer want people to spend seven years in developmental. So it's going to be like every six months, they're going to evaluate you. And if you're not getting better, you're out of there. So wow. they're, they're just bum, 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 bum. Let's, let's get them going, get them to the main roster, make these stars. That's why I was so frustrated today on Observer Live with all these people going, oh, LeBron Breaker, like they're just going to screw this. It's a, dude, it ain't the old NXT anymore. Everything He's exactly what they want. Everything has changed with this new NXT. They know what they want. It's a certain type of person who works a certain way and talks a certain way and is trained from scratch. And they get better quick and they move up or they're out of there. Like this is the new way that it's going to work. And we'll see if it works. I mean, the I old think, way should have worked, but uh, it didn't for a lot of reasons. Well, I, I think it would actually be more productive to like. We, we've talked about this. I don't know if we talked about it on the show, but when you have upwards of 120 people in developmental, it's like they're not calling up more than a half a dozen a year. So it's like you've got 20 years worth of talent at the PC, which means that you have to figure on 75% failure rate pretty much. So if they're going to be more particular in their hires, focus really hard on the ones that they want, like a Braun Breaker, and get them up. I, In a way, it, it would be packed more to what they had in OVW. But imagine now, though, the, the unfortunateness of international talent, because I mentioned this one Ring of Honor, because it's just chances for Canadians and Australians and foreigners to get a look. It's like... If they're looking at potentially turning people around in three to six months if they're not going where they want, it's like, are they going to want to go to the expense and the effort of getting people visas? And you're now going to have to really make sure you think you have it. Because if you're some Joe Blow, let's just use Nick Wayne for his example, if he's still living up in the Seattle area, like if they want to sign him to developmental, it's like, does this kid want to pack up his life and move to Florida get an apartment and then find out in four months or six months they've reevaluated and don't want them. And he's like, oh, shit, you know, i got to move again. It's like this is a, an interesting situation for people. Last thing, too, that we've got to talk about these two shows, and that is that, yes, it is true. I've heard this from multiple sources that there were individuals that were cut because they refused to get vaccinated. So 
clearly was not all budget cuts, but uh, there were at least a small handful of the names on that list that just weren't going to get vaccinated and the company didn't want to deal with it, and probably many other things as well, but that's the story. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.